Lucretia back again with the Encyclopedia Fitness.com, and today I'm going to be featuring an article again on stretching. Um, a couple days ago, we posted an article to our YouTube channel on stretching part one, and this is stretching part two. So if you'd like to see it, please subscribe to the Encyclopedia Fitness.com YouTube channel. The other day, when I posted the video, we were talking about uh, different categories of stretching, and I highlighted on active and passive. Um, they were just general kind of forms of stretching, but there are other categories of stretching based on the different ways or methods rather of doing the stretching. Um, and some of these main categories are ballistic stretching, dynamic stretching, static stretching, and proprioceptive ne neuromuscular facilitation (PNF) stretching. Ballistic stretching uses momentum and bouncing to push the muscles to their limits. It's a stretch that's being done by fast jerky movements and um, nowadays it's not really recommended to do these this kind of stretching because um, there is the speed factor which is involved in this kind of stretch which is more likely to lead to injury just because um, it's kind of an uncontrolled movement so it can push the muscles, push the muscles past their range of motion limit and that would cause an injury just because the speed you can get it so that it um, you're doing it too fast and you can't control it anymore and then you won't be able to stop and you'll hurt yourself. Another type of stretching that I mentioned before was dynamic stretching. Um, this type of stretching also involves movement with two major differences from ballistic stretching. Um, first, um, the speed of the movements are now under control. Um, so you you use movement and you use um, a kind of a frequency of doing it, but it's not necessarily a speed that can't be controlled. And then both the speed and range of motion gradually increase as the stretch goes forward, but the range of motion never exceeds the ra max range of motion for the joint. So although you'll be increasing the speed and the frequency and um, with that increasing the range of motion, there'll be a limit as to how far you can go um, and you won't be able to push any further, which is good because you don't want to be injured. Now, another common important kind of stretching is static stretching, which for people with um, muscle disorders, like I have cerebral palsy, this is something that we sometimes do actually for prioceptive neuromuscular facilitation stretching is more common. Um, we kind of combine these two together. So for static stretching, unlike ballistic and dynamic stretching, um, static stretching is not really based on movement. It's actually after a slow and steady speed, the muscle reaches its maximum pain-free length. Um, so their max range of motion involved with the joint. So then once it's at this max range of motion, you hold that position for 20 seconds or more. Um, to get the stretch. So I've often done st stretches like this. I often hold them for a minute to 90 seconds um, just so that I can be sure that I get an adequate stretch. Now the last type of stretching, which I've mentioned a few times before, is believed to be one of the most effective ways to increase the range of motion, which is why it's used for people with cerebral palsy like myself. And it's the Pyreceptive Neuromuscular Facilitation, or PNF stretching. Uh, there are several different versions to doing this type of stretching. In the simplest form, um, the static, it's a static stretch with an assistive partner, which as I mentioned in the stretching one video, that's the kind of stretching I do. I need a partner to do it. And it's being held for 6 to 10 seconds. As I said, I hold mine for about a minute to 90 seconds. After a short rest, um, rest period, so you have to relax out of the stretch, which varies between one to three seconds, or you can even go up to five seconds. The same process is being repeated. So you do the stretch over again. Um, but this time, um, you'll have a higher range of motion um, caused by the previous technique. So your muscles will be looser. And you'll be able to reach a higher range of motion just because you did the exercise before. Um, and you, it usually requires about three repetitions um, done every time. So I usually do between three and five repetitions just because some stretches I find need a little bit more 
and it takes me a little bit more to get into them. But typically, three to five repetitions are what's required. So if you'd like to read more up on stretching and this part two article, please go to the website at www.encyclopediafitness.com. If you have any questions about your stretching routine or stretches in general, maybe your, just your fitness program in general, whether you should incorporate stretches, please go to the Ask Us forum on the website or email us at askus at encyclopediafitness.com. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoy. Bye now.